once upon a time in a quiet yoruba village there lived a man named adisa and his wife fumilayo blessed with three children life was peaceful and the family had planned to stop growing content with their three offspring but fate had its own plans and soon fumilayo became pregnant once more the news was met with mixed emotions joy for another child but concern for the hadn't plan for a fault. As the months passed, the pregnancy seemed normal. But on the day of delivery, tragedy struck. Fumilayo went through complications, the labor was long, and the cries of the family echoed through the night. When the baby girl was born, she survived, but Fumilayo passed away. The loss shattered the family, leaving Adisa heartbroken and blaming the newborn for his wife's death. They named her Agu, which in the family's eyes now carried the weight of sorrow and loss. Fumilayo's sister Adebinkbe came to care for Agu since her mother was no longer alive to do so. As Agu grew, she blossomed into a beautiful girl, but a troubling sign emerged. Her vision began to fail and before long, she was completely blind. This blindness only depends the family's resentment. Adisa, already stricken with grief, believed Ago's bed had stolen his wife from him. He refused to acknowledge her presence, treating her as a curse upon the household. To make matters worse, in their culture, a child born at the cost of a mother's life was seen as a bad omen, a taboo. The belief ran deep and even Ago's siblings and extended family held her at arm's length, never letting her forget her body in their eyes. But Ago was no ordinary child. Though blind, she had a gift, a sense far beyond the physical world. She could hear things no one else could hear, see things that lay hidden to ordinary eyes. She could sense when someone was ill, and even more remarkably, she knew exactly which herbs or medicine were needed to heal them. Yet, despite her extraordinary gifts, her family's resentment blinded them to her abilities. The whispers of her insight were dismissed as nothing more than the ramblings of a cursed child. On fateful day, as Ago made her way to the stream to fetch water, she overheard the cry of a desperate family. A child had fallen gravely ill, and the parents' wail of anguish filled the air. They were afraid of losing their only son, and the local herbalist had declared that nothing could be done to save him. Curiosity and concern pulled Ago towards the commotion. She asked the gathered crowd what had happened, and they told her of the boy's illness. Her heart ached, knowing she might be able to help. Without hesitation, she hurried towards the family's home. The crowd murmured, and when they saw her rushing inside, they tried to stop her. Please let me see the child, she begged. Maybe I can help. The people outside laughed mockingly. You? A blind girl? They jeered. The abalis with eyes couldn't save him. And you think you can? Ago ignored their scorn and turned to the parents of the sick child, pleading with them for a chance. The father, though skeptical, saw the desperation in her voice and reluctantly allowed her to step inside. The mother, torn between hope and fear, stood back and watched. The moment Ago entered the room, she felt the oppressive heat radiating from the boy's body. She approached him, her hands carefully moving over him until she found the source of the fever. Gently, she touched his face, his chest, and his back, her sense guiding her. The child is burning up, Ago said softly. Take off all his clothes and bring him outside so that the air can touch his skin. The parents hesitated, but something in Ago's calm voice made them trust her. Reluctantly, they did as she asked, bringing the boy out into the open. The crowd followed, watching in silence. Ago wasted no time. She hurried to the nearby forest, her hands moving swiftly among the familiar plants. She gathered leaves, carefully selecting the ones she needed. When she returned, she crushed the leaves in her palms squeezing the liquid into a small bowl. Give this to him to drink, Ago instructed, handing the bowl to the boy's mother. Though still unsure, the woman gave the mixture to her child, praying for a miracle. Ago then pressed gently on the boy's back, 
applying pressure to specific points. Moments later, the boy began to gag, struggling for air, and then to everyone's shock, he coughed violently and spat out a small round object, a pearl, smooth and shiny. The crowd gasped in astonishment. The boy, now free from the obstruction, gasped for air. His breathing stayed in as the color returned to his face. The parents stared in disbelief. Their son was alive, breathing, saved by the blind girl they had once dismissed. Tears of gratitude filled their eyes as they turned to Agu, overwhelmed with emotion. You saved our child, the father cried, falling to his knees. Thank you, the mother held Ago's hand. The news of the miraculous event spread quickly through the village, and soon people began whispering of Ago, a blind girl with a gift beyond sight. When Ago's family heard of her miraculous healings, especially her father, they did not celebrate her. Instead, her father grew even more convinced that she was a witch. In his mind, she had killed his wife, and now with these strange powers emerging, it only confirmed his fears. His whispers spread through the village, and soon rumors began to circulate that Ago was not just cause but a witch. The stories were fueled by none other than her own family, who held on to the belief that a child who caused her mother's death was an omen. The village native doctor already feeling threatened by Ago's unique ability to heal, saw her as a challenge to his authority. His income and reputation as the healer were at stake, and he feared losing his customers to this blind girl who possessed powers that went beyond his own. In an effort to protect his livelihood, he helped spread the rumors and began plotting a way to eliminate her. Determined to rid himself of the competition, the native doctor gathered a group of boys from a neighboring village. He paid them to kidnap Ago and take her far away, reasoning that since she was blind, she wouldn't be able to find her way back. One of the boys hesitated, asking, what about her family? Won't they look for her? The native doctor assured him with a cold smile, her family doesn't want her. I'm doing them a favor by getting rid of her. They will be relieved when she is gone. One early morning, as Ago made her way to the stream, the boys ambushed her. Sensing their presence before they could even touch her, Ago began to cry and plead for mercy, asking them not to harm her. But the boys, bound by their promise to the native doctor, tied her mouth to silence her cries and carried her off. They traveled to a village three communities away, where they left her alone, abandoned on the street, helpless and far from home. Ago wandered the unfamiliar village, calling out for help, but no one paid her much attention. Disoriented and weak, she continued begging for assistance until an old woman, moved by pity, decided to help. This woman, named Abeni, brought Ago into her humble home, offering her food, clothing, and a place to rest. That night, as they settled to sleep, Ago noticed the woman's breathing was labored, as if she was struggling for air. Her instincts told her something was wrong, but she waited until morning. When dawn broke, Ago asked gently, Mama, I noticed you didn't sleep well last night. What is wrong? Abeni sighed, her voice heavy with tears of frustration. It's my chest, oh my dear. It pains me every night, and I've tried everything. I've visited herbalists in every village, but nothing has worked. Ago thought for a moment, then said, Mama, I can help you in return for your kindness to me. I will cure your ailment. Abeni looked surprised, but there was hope in her eyes. If you can do it, my child, I will be forever grateful. Ago smiled softly. Take me to the nearby forest. I need to gather some herbs for your treatment. Though skeptical, Abeni agreed and led her to the forest. With Ago's unique gifts, she instinctively knew which plants to pick. After returning home, Ago prepared the herbs and boiled them into a remedy. She handed the mixture to Abeni and instructed her, Drink this every night before bed and you will be able to sleep well. 
Abeni, filled with hope, followed Agor's direction, believing in the possibility of healing from this mysterious blind girl. Back in Agor's village, her disappearance went unnoticed by most, especially her father. He showed no concern for whether she would return or not. When Fumilayo's sister, Adebinkpe, realized Ago was missing, she grew frantic. She searched tirelessly through the village, asking anyone if they had seen the blind girl. At night, we were sleepless, haunted by the thought of what might have happened to her niece. She begged Adisa, Ago's father, for help, but he only scoffed. She has probably wandered off to her witch gatherings, he said with a dismissive wave. Maybe she forgot the way home. He and his other children even laughed mockingly at the thought, indifferent to her fate. But Adebinkpe's heart wouldn't rest. She searched the village until exhaustion overcame her, but no one offered help or comfort. With nowhere else to turn, she knelt before the girls, praying they would protect Ago wherever she might be, hoping against hope that her niece would find safety. As the days passed, the old woman Abeni began to notice a remarkable improvement in her health. Her chest pain had eased and she could breathe freely at night for the first time in years. Grateful for Ago's miraculous remedy, Abeni began telling her friends and neighbors about the blind girl who had healed her. Word spread quickly and soon people from the village started coming to Ago asking for treatment. Her reputation as a healer grew and more and more people sought her out, amazed by her ability to cure ailments that others had given up on. The village herbalists who had tried for years to heal Abeni without success became intrigued. He had heard rumors about Ago's power and the way she had cured the old woman. Curious and perhaps a little humbled, he approached Ago one day. Instead of seeing her as a threat, he asked her, teach me the medicine you use, together we can do more good for the people. Ago, kind-hearted and wise, agreed to share her knowledge. Together, they began working side by side, combining their skills. Their partnership became well known and soon people from distant villages traveled to seek treatment from the remarkable blind girl and her herbalist companion. With the growing number of visitors, Ago decided to show her gratitude to Abeni. She renovated the old woman's modest hut, transforming it into a larger, more comfortable home where they could continue their healing work. One day, a heavily pregnant woman arrived at Ago's home in desperation. She had been carrying her baby for over a year, and after visiting several herbalists with no success, she had heard rumors of the gifted blind girl who had the ability to heal even the most difficult cases. With no other options, the woman came seeking Ago's help. Ago asked the woman to lie down, and with her heightened sense, she carefully inspected the pregnancy. She soon realized that the baby was healthy, but something was preventing the child from descending for delivery. After some thoughts, Ago prepared a special mixture of herbs to help induce labor. This was enchanted territory for her, but her instincts were strong. The woman, trusting Ago's expertise, took the herbal remedy. Soon, she felt the first sign of labor, something she had waited anxiously for over the past year. As the labor progressed, Ago and her herbalist partner prepared for the delivery. When the baby finally began to descend, Ago sensed that something was wrong. She quickly discovered that the umbilical cord was wrapped around the baby's neck, threatening the child's life. With calm precision, Ago guided her partner through the delicate process of unwrapping the cord. Together, they safely delivered the baby, bringing the child into the world for the first time. The village marveled at the news. Ago, the blind girl, had successfully delivered a baby, something no one had ever expected. From that moment on, her reputation grew even greater and she became known not just as a healer but as a miracle worker. When Ago stepped out of the hut after delivering the baby, she was greeted by a shocking sight. Standing before her was the husband of the woman she had just helped, her own father. Beside him were the siblings, and in the distance stood the herbalists who had once plotted to have her kidnapped. 
Ago sensed their presence immediately. She called out her father's name, her voice sharp and unwavering. Adisa, she said, what are you doing here? Her father froze in shock, as did the rest of her family. They were stunned to realize that the blind girl who had gained fame as a healer was none other than Ago, the daughter they had cast aside. The girl he had blamed for the death of his first wife, the one he had never cared for, had just saved his new wife's life. Adisa fell to his knees, tears streaming down his face. Ago, my daughter, please forgive me, he pleaded. I was wrong. I blame you for things you had no control over. I never looked for you when you went missing. But please, I beg you, find it in your heart to forgive me. Ago's expression remained unreadable as she spoke. Her voice laced with pain. Forgiveness? After all you did? After spreading rumors about me being a witch? After hating me for something I had no control over? The death of my mother? You wanted me gone. You couldn't bring yourself to kill me. So you had me kidnapped and abandoned me far from home. Knowing I wouldn't be able to find my way back. And now, after all this time, you want forgiveness? A father shook his head desperately. That is not true. I never wanted to kill you. I was just... I was devastated after losing your mother. I didn't know how to deal with the pain. I never plotted to have you kidnapped. I swear, please believe me. Ago's eyes, though blind, seemed to pierce through him. Believe you? She said softly. But her words carried a heavy weight. When I went missing, what did you do to find me? Nothing. You did absolutely nothing. If it had been one of your other children, you would have searched the ends of the earth. But as for me, the daughter you blame for everything, I was nothing to you. A father's silence was deafening and for the first time, he truly saw the weight of the pain he had caused. Argo stood tall, even in her blindness, her voice steady and unwavering as she asked, If you weren't the one who orchestrated my kidnapping, then who was? Silence filled the air until the herbalist, who had once been a feared figure in the village, knelt before her, his head bowed in shame. It was me, he confessed, his voice trembling. I was blinded by jealousy. That is why I did what I did. I'm so sorry. Ago frowned, though her face remained calm. Who are you? Have I met you before? What did I ever do to make you so jealous that you would have me kidnapped and abandoned in a distant land? The Habali struggled to hold back his tears. It was when you killed that woman's child, he explained. I felt threatened, like you were going to take away all my customers. I was insecure and in my jealousy, I did something unforgivable. Ago's voice softened, though her pain was evident. Back then, as a child, my only goal was to heal and save lives. I never sought to take anything from you, but I didn't blame you, because if my own family had cared for me, none of these would have happened. She turned slightly, her sightless gaze resting on the herbalist, then on her father and siblings. I thank God for what happened, because through your actions, I found these wonderful people who loved me beyond compare. My granny, Abeni, accepted me when my world was falling apart. And today, I have paid the price for your loss. You lost your wife during childbirth, and I saved your new one. In doing so, I have atoned for whatever crime you thought I committed. Turning to her father, Ago's voice grew firmer. Father, you lost a wife as an adult, with the capacity to cope with your grief. But me, an infant with no direction, I lost a mother I never even met. Do you think I wasn't hurt? I wish many times that I had never been born, questioned why I existed at all. Do you think I like being blind? A father wept silently, his regret overwhelming. I forgive you, Ago said softly, not because you are my family, but for my own peace of mind. With those words, she turned away from them, leaving her father the herbalist and her siblings kneeling on the ground, tears streaming down their faces as they were consumed by the realization of what they had done. After they left, Argo's heart was heavy with all that had been revealed. Days turned into weeks 
and her family kept coming back, begging for her forgiveness. They brought gifts and tried to show how sorry they were for all the pain they had caused. Her father in particular was relentless in his efforts, his shame ever present in his eyes. He knelt before her time and again pleading for a chance to make amends. At first, Argo kept her distance, her heart still guarded, but with time, her resolve began to soften. She remembered the teachings of her grandmother Abeni, who had always emphasized the importance of forgiveness, not just for others but for one's peace of mind. Slowly, she allowed her family back into her life. However, she made one firm decision. She would stay with her grandmother, who had loved her unconditionally from the start. It was in Abeni's home she felt safe and accepted for who she truly was. Together with her grandmother and her colleague the Habalis who sought to learn from her, Ago continued to heal people from far and wide. Her name spread beyond her village, reaching distant communities where people marveled at her gifts. Despite her blindness, Ago could see the world in ways others could not. Her family, though they had wronged her, slowly became part of her life again. She welcomed their presence though her bond with Abeni remained the strongest. Ago's father, now a humbled man, often visited, watching with Al as his daughter worked miracles. He never stopped expressing his regrets, but Ago, in her wisdom, taught him that forgiveness wasn't just about words, it was about change. And over time, he showed that he had changed, that he had learned from his mistakes. The village learned valuable lessons from Ago's journey. They realized the danger of allowing fear and superstition to cloud their judgment. They saw firsthand how jealousy and insecurity could destroy lives. But most importantly, they witnessed the power of forgiveness and love. Ago's life became a testament to resilience and the ability to rise above hardship, not through bitterness but through compassion. And so, Ago continued her work with her grandmother by her side, surrounded by love and purpose. She had been born into tragedy, but she rose above it to become a beacon of hope for many.